This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for March 24, 2023, two women and a taxi man shot dead in Kingston. Two women were among three people killed on Upper King Street in the vicinity of Hero Circle in Kingston late Thursday. The other victim was a male taxi driver. The news understands that the women were traveling in the taxi to get their makeups done ahead of a party when it is believed that they were trailed by unknown assailants in another vehicle. As the females attempted to exit the taxi, gunmen alighted from the other vehicle and opened gunfire hitting all three occupants of the cab with bullets killing them on the spot. The Kingston Central Police and the members of the Major Investigation Division are now processing the scene. Three accused in human trafficking case to stand the trial. The three individuals accused of forcing two females to engage in lewd activities almost four years ago are slated to go on trial in July on charges of human trafficking. Ione Ricketts, 45, of New Ramble Bogue is charged with human trafficking while Lisa Shea White, 22 of the same address, is charged with facilitating human trafficking. Jerome Murray Ricketts, alleged a boyfriend, is also charged with facilitating human trafficking. The matter was called up in the St. James Circuit Court on Thursday before presiding High Court Judge Andrea Thomas. The Crown Counsel, who has conducted the case, informed the court via video link that the Crown was ready to proceed and attorney at law Michael Hemmings, who represents the trio, requested a July 3 trial date. Justice Thomas then scheduled a case for trial on July 3 and the three defendants' bills were extended. According to the prosecution's case file, the incident took place on April 26, 2019. The two complainants, both of whom were over the age of 18, were reportedly walking along a road in St. James when they were pursued by the two accused women. One of the complainants managed to escape, but the other was captured placed inside a motor car and driven away. Family members of the captured female reported her missing and requested the assistance of the other complainant in locating her. On May 4, the police were called to Ricky's home in New Ramble, where Murray was seen. The officers detained him and they took him to the police station, where he called Ricketts and asked her to come to the station. When Ricketts got to the station, she informed the cops that she knew the whereabouts of the complainant who had gone missing. She then contacted White who informed her that she and the missing girl were in Cambridge. White and the missing complainant eventually arrived at the station. The two young females were interviewed at the station and it was discovered that the three accused were exploiting them. The three defendants were arrested and charged. Ambulance badly damaged in Westmoreland crash. The Negril Fire Station's only ambulance was extensively damaged during an accident on the Mango Hill Main Road in Westmoreland about 6.15 p.m. Thursday. The emergency vehicle was en route to the Savannah Lamar Hospital when it collided with a Mitsubishi motor car being driven by a woman. The ambulance was transporting a man who had fallen from a tree. All persons involved in the crash, including the passenger in the ambulance, have been taken to hospital. The vehicle was handed over by the government to the Negril Fire Station about three years ago. District Officer Ralston Smith said it was a very, very big loss for Negril and the wider Westmoreland as well as Hanover. Businessman facing extradition on drug charges seeks bail. A parish court judge is to rule next Wednesday whether bail will be granted to a St. Andrew businessman who is challenging his extradition to the United States on drug charges. 50-year-old Anthony Daniels is accused of being a major player in a drug trafficking network operating out of Jamaica and the United States. He was arrested last July along with three others who were busted in separate anti-narcotics operations by police and military teams in St. James and the St. Andrew. Daniels is wanted in the U.S. on charges of conspiracy to distribute 5 kilograms or more of cocaine and the two counts of distribution of five kilograms of cocaine or more. Allegations are that between February and December of 2021, 
U.S. authorities carried out an investigation into a drug trafficking network operating out of Jamaica and Philadelphia, which led to the seizure of a quantity of cocaine at the Philadelphia International Airport. Investigations reportedly led to Daniels, and he was indicted. Last July, when Daniels appeared in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court to answer to the extradition request, his lawyer Christopher Townsend indicated that he would be contesting the extradition and he was remanded. Since then, the matter has been before the court for an extradition hearing. However, Daniel's defense team, which also includes Tom Tavares Finson Casey, recently applied to the court for bail. On Tuesday, the team completed their application, but the prosecution, in objecting, reported that Daniels had attempted to escape custody since his arrest. Consequently, the judge instructed the prosecution to bring evidence to substantiate its claim. Tavares Finson argued during the application that the law allows for the parish judge to grant his client a bail. He further pointed out that the extradition hearing is likely to take some time before the court as the defense is contending that the evidence presented against Daniels does not meet the standards and does not warrant him being extradited. According to Tavares Finson, the team is also contemplating bringing the matter further before the High Court. Meanwhile, Tavares Finson said that the idea of granting bail to an individual who is being sought by the U.S. is not a novel and that another client who is similarly wanted in the U.S. was recently granted bail by the court. Portmore stakeholders propose installation of CCTV cameras to help curb crime. There is a call for facial recognition closed-circuit television cameras to be installed in Portmore St. Catherine to support the surveillance in the business community. The call was made during a meeting Thursday involving the police and the business operators. The meeting followed recent attacks on businesses by robbers in Portmore. Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips, commanding officer for the St. Catherine South Division, said that tips were provided to the business community on how to increase security at their establishments to prevent them from being targeted by criminals. We have encouraged our business community to do a little bit of target hardening. They have to take some responsibility too. We have encouraged them to look on their camera system, the surveillance. They have to pay attention to the persons that they are employing to be security guards and persons who they have monitoring their surveillance system if they do have any. There are some businesses that set their own policy in terms of persons entering. Don't allow persons to be coming in in woody and uh, dark glasses and masks, you know, make it a policy that once you're entering a business, you have to take those off if you have camera system. So there are a number of um, areas that we encourage them to look on. The latest attack on an establishment in Portmore occurred Sunday when security guards attached to Beryllium were wounded during an armed robbery at a Scotia Bank automated teller machine in Brayton Park. Mayor of Portmore, Leon Thomas, has committed $500,000 for procurement of CCTV cameras to be installed at specific locations in the municipality, which he said has seven entrance and exit points. I've made a commitment because the police have called for a surveillance camera to set up throughout the municipality. We have seven entrance and exit point within the municipality. And I have made a commitment of $500,000 towards that. And I hope that the business community will come on board through the Chamber of Commerce to also put up some money that we can set up surveillance camera to monitor the entry and exit point within this municipality. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.